In this episode of Travelog, join me in the Tibet's autonomous region as I explore the lush landscapes of Linzhu Prefecture. It'll be a journey across a land blessed by nature, and we'll discover how her gifts have influenced the lives of the people here. Hey, you know, Tibet is such an iconic name. It makes you think of places like you know, immense Himalayan mountains, pious pilgrims making their way to Lhasa, and how difficult life is at the top of the world. But that's so cliched. And I want to show you that life in the Tibet Autonomous Region isn't as hard as you think it is. I'm Turan, welcome to Travelog, and welcome to YouTube. Forget all your preconceptions about Tibet when you come to Linzhu. Nestled in Tibet's southeast corner, and in stark contrast to other parts of the Tibetan Plateau, here is a lush landscape, nourished by the Yalong Zampa River and 300 days a year of rain. This is the landscape surrounding Bayi Town, a two-hour flight from Chengdu and the set-off point. Right, so you know one of the first things people do when they come to Bayi Town is they come here to visit the sacred Biru mountain, which is a, a sort of a holy mountain for both Tibetan Buddhists and also believers of Bon, which is the indigenous religion of Tibet. And what's interesting is that Tibetan Buddhists will walk around the mountain uh, clockwise, while Bon believers will walk around the mountains anti-clockwise. So if we continue down this path, you might see a couple people bumping into each other. Though the direction they walk in might be different, the goal is the same, to accumulate good merit and achieve a better rebirth. You know, I've, I've seen a few sacred mountains in my time. I, I don't mean to brag, but I have seen. And, you know, when I saw those mountains, it was a, it was a different kind of feeling. When you see those kind of mountains, it, it's, it's this kind of power, you know, you feel overpowered or you feel awed into silence, but it's, it's different here. Here it kind of, I don't know, it feels peaceful, you know, it feels like I've found a home for myself, that this mountain is my protective deity and this is my home and he's here to look after me. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it does feel like a bit like that for me. This is it. This is the mother river of Linzhu, the Niang River, which is actually the upper tributary of the Yalong Zampo. And when it flows down south into India, it becomes a Brahmaputra. But this is where the greatest, one of the greatest rivers in the world, and the highest rivers in, in the world, I guess, gets its beginning. It's absolutely gorgeous here. It feeds everything in Linzhu. Linju's lifeblood is its water, and I want to get a closer look by taking a cruise along the Niyang River. Along the way, we keep bumping into Bon pilgrims heading to the nearby Benru sacred mountain, but alas, we need to soldier on. Now these trees look really weird, don't they? You know, these are actually willow trees, but they're not the kind of willow trees we're used to. You see this weird kind of cancerous growth. None of it has branches, because in summer, when the Niang River's waters are high, they go all the way to the top, where you see those branches coming out. So it just goes to show how different the water level can be in every season over here.
Hey, you know, this is traveling in style, right? So we're going to take this uh, submarine-like sort of boat uh, downstream by the Niyang River. And in summer, when the water is higher, you can actually take it 60 kilometers all the way down to Pai Town, which is at the entrance of the Yalong's Upper Grand Canyon. But uh, we're just going to take a scenic tour today. And we've got these cool-looking captains to boot, hey? Yeah. So, uh, the reason we're wearing these life vests, despite it being absolutely boiling, I mean, I've got like four layers of clothes on, is because although this uh, boat is very firm on the water, we have to be very careful. Uh, we can't go all the way into the Yalan Zabba Grand Canyon because the water is quite shallow at this time of year. And also, uh, we have to follow the water downstream. You can't go against the flow because then it's, it's well, don't really want to think about what happens next. The Niyang River travels more than 300 kilometers from its source up in the mountains to eventually join the Yalang Zampo as its longest tributary. By the time it gets here, the waters are more or less placid, allowing our boat and our guide to show us around. Then 没有老鹰对也是说秃鹫嘛Despite sitting on the eastern end of the Himalayas, Linju has plenty of oxygen thanks to its many trees. It's great news for the pilgrims who often walk for months to get here. In many parts of Tibet, fruit and vegetables are rare to come by, so Linju's wide variety of relatively cheap produce is also a welcome change. So uh, we've driven 25 kilometers from Bai Town, not far, to come here to Lamaling Monastery, which is one of the biggest and most important lamasseries near Bai Town, and it's home to the Nimapa, the Red Hat sect of Tibetan Buddhism, one of the oldest, actually no, the oldest sect. And this place is not only a tourist destination, but apparently if you come here to pray, then many of your prayers will be answered. <laughs> Laoling's abbot tells me many pilgrims come here in the hopes of finding a solution to their problems. He says neither he nor the monastery can offer a miracle cure. But the long journey here gives people time for self-reflection. Often, by the time they arrive, they've already solved their problem. Lamaling, he says, is a catalyst, not a cure. You know, I think uh, a lot of people, including myself, might be disappointed when you first come here because this lamassery is totally new. I mean, the, the latest uh, refurbishment was in 1980-something. But I don't think new is necessarily a bad thing because this is lamassery of the oldest branch of Tibetan Buddhism, the Nyingmapa, which basically stems back from when Buddhism first came into Tibet in the 8th century. And it just goes to show that for them to build something as big and grand and beautiful as this, that they still respect old traditions and that old Tibetan Buddhism is still alive. Linju is often described as one of the cradles of Tibetan civilization, but I don't think the journey to Lamaling has to be spiritual to be meaningful. For average tourists like me, traveling here is a great opportunity to see a more colorful side of Tibet. In Tibetan areas, you see loads of these kinds of colors. It's a bit loud, actually. And it might seem a bit garish to some people, but 
they have a particular kind of significance for Tibetans, uh, especially in India. These colors are representative. So blue would be the sky, yellow or orange in this case would be earth, and then you have red, which is sun, white for clouds, and um, green for water. But that's because these are kind of affected by Bond, the indigenous religion of Tibet, which was more nature related. You know, people uh, respected and prayed and worshipped to nature. And these hark back to those times. It's morning and I'm leaving Bai for Lulang, roughly 80 kilometers away. But then this farmer catches my eye. Like a roller coaster ride, jeez. Uh. Linja's biggest difference when compared to other parts of Tibet is that its abundance of water means the locals grow crops rather than herding livestock. Thanks to high Indian Ocean winds, Linju is relatively warm and humid, allowing a large variety of produce to be grown here. This is a huge luxury, since much of the Tibetan plateau consists of perennially snow-covered mountains and arid steppes, too frigid even for burial, let alone agriculture. Jeez, is it like getting a free ride on a roller coaster? Gotta get uh, thrown back and forth. I realize this is actually not a not a two-seater tractor. But I was talking to the farmer just over there. He said before he used to uh, plow the land with uh, cows, with bulls, and then he sold them all off to get this tractor. And now he's planting um, some kind of lettuce that's hopefully going to uh, be harvested in July. And he's going to eat all of this himself. That's why he's so thin. You know, at first glance, this place feels a bit like southern China, because where else would you find this kind of scenery, you know? You don't really think of the Tibet Autonomous Region as having rolling fields of green wheat, but again, this is another side of the Tibet that you don't see so often. One of the biggest draws of Linju in spring is its famous Peach Blossom Festival. Come here mid-March to mid-April and you'll get to see entire valleys turn fabulously pink with the flowers of the wild peach trees. They say this place is the photographer's paradise, especially in spring when you get these really nice cherry blossoms and in autumn when you have the uh, reds and the yellows up on the mountains. But Ninja is a bit unique in the sense that you get this kind of scenery all throughout the year. So as long as you have time, you can come here for the perfect shot. Besides looking pretty, peach blossoms are also hugely significant in Chinese culture, thanks to being associated with immortality and utopia. As for me, it's time to continue on to Lulang. To get there, we need to drive up and over Sertila Mountain, but I can't help notice how drastically the weather changes here. From the blossoms of spring to the heat of summer, and even the snow cover of winter, it feels like I'm experiencing all the seasons in just one day. So uh, we're on our way to Lulang town right now, um, but the weather here is really freaky. I mean, we're in the middle of April right now, it's spring, and just look around. It doesn't look like we're in the right season, does it? This mountain belongs to part of the Trans-Himalayan range that's abundant with spectacular scenery and icy patches. So drivers, keep your eyes on the road. 
Oh, wow. Oh, man. Did you look at... I can't, I can't open my eyes because I'm going slow behind. Crikey, look at this. You know, on the way up here, I saw uh, these mountains and I thought how awesome it would be to ski down them. But then I was told these are actually sacred mountains. This is uh, Sertilai Mountain. And it's 4,300 meters above sea level. We're close to the top now. And as you can see, a lot of people will come up here and uh, put up their prayer flags so that when the wind blows, their, um, their mantras that are written on the prayer flags will be blown to the winds and then they'll get good karma. But just look at this place, it's incredible. That's the thing, this is the middle of, middle of spring. Wow. To me, the snow almost has an otherworldly sense of purity. You know, it is, it is uh, ridiculously cold up here. It's as cold as it is, as it is beautiful. And I'm so glad I brought my uh, ski balaclava and my sunglasses because without these, you'd be freezing. Well, my hands are frozen and you wouldn't be able to see, so words of the wise, make sure you bring all the right equipment up here. So, uh, I was wrong earlier. Uh, I looked at my watch and I said the altitude was 4,200 meters above sea level. It's actually, well, my watch is wrong anyway. Uh, it says it's 4,392, but apparently at this height, these watches stopped uh, being useful and in actual fact the height that we're at now is 4720 meters above sea level which would explain why my head is thumping like a like a drum but you know it's well worth the pain check it out At 3,700 meters above sea level and encompassing roughly 100 square kilometers, this is Lulang's famous sea of forests, an endless expanse of spruce, pine, and other conifers. You know, you get such an incredible panoramic view here. Uh, we're on our way to Lulang town, and we've just come down from Sertalan Mountain, and we had to stop here at this viewing platform because just check out the view, this sea of forests is exactly what Luolang Town is famous for and you get postcard quality pictures here. I'm told that when it gets warmer, azaleas will bloom across the valley and come July, rhododendrons will dominate the landscape. At the foot of the mountain lies Luolang Town. It's a well-developed tourist hub with lots of choices for food and accommodation, and as such, is a popular pit stop for backpackers making their way across Tibet. <笑>你们去哪儿啊那你们那你们准备还有多少天去摩托啊就去啊今天去过面啊然后就扎帐篷就 <laughs> ah, to be young again. Anyway, it's lunchtime and there's a famous local dish we've got to try. Right, so uh, we've just arrived in Mula and you can see uh, everyone's making their uh, attack on this pot. Uh, this is the specialty of Lulang, it's called stone pot chicken. And the main thing about this is that the pot itself is made of stone from a place called Morto, which is another part of Ninshu. It's made um, completely from one block of stone. 
and it has 16 different types of minerals. I can't really name all of them, uh, but inside they place chicken, broth, and then lots of different Tibetan medicinal herbs like goji berries. Um, this thing, uh, it's called Buddha Palm. Something I can't name it, but these are all very, very healing and restorative. And then the Piesta response is this. This is some of a very valuable kind of mushroom that grows only at 3,000 meters uh, above sea level and is very, very valuable. Um, it's said to prevent you from being radioactive. I don't know if that helps or not. And it also acts as an anti-aging agent. So if I stick this in there, then uh, the laser will become Superman. Oh, man. Superpowers aside, all those nutritious ingredients are bound to have an effect, and I walked away completely re-energized. Not far from town are the meadows that Lulang's also known for. Only, all I see are a bunch of yaks grazing on dry bushes. Luckily, I bumped into an old watchman who clued me in. So we've come to the famous meadows of Lulang, only um, it's not the right season, uh, the flowers bloom in summer, but uh, you have a lot of herdsmen and uh, nomadic farmers here, and uh, this nice gentleman noticed that I was out there wandering by myself, and he said it's a bit cold, so he's invited me to go in uh, and make a fire over there. Huh? Oh. Huh? This is good. Huh? This is good. Hey, that iron thing you took is what? Just Oh, it's rubber! You need a lunch time, I was wondering what this was, because I, I, I thought it was some kind of special uh, herdsman-only material, but it's, it turns out it's just a piece of tyre from someone's car. <laughs> That's really clever, though. It's very Oh, thank you. It's not as easy as it looks. Mainly I'm just afraid of... Uh, there you go. Mainly I'm just afraid of splitting my hand with this. There you go. This is good. I'm going to put this in. Do you want to put it in? Yeah. Maybe I'm not so cut out for this kind of life. This gentleman, he's, he's obviously very much at home here. He told me earlier that um, uh, he's the only one here right now because it's not, um, it's not the uh, right season for people to bring out their flocks of uh, yak and, and sheep. Um, so everyone's at home and he's the person. He's basically the gatekeeper of this place. So he's here every day making sure the flock outside is safe, making sure nothing bad happens here. He's like the... It's like the gatekeeper. <laughs> As you drive through Lulang, you'll often come across quaint little Tibetan villages that are completely off the tourist radar. Here in Jasigang village, life flows along at the same pace it always has. There's little to do here except marvel at how Linja's waters have nourished its fertile lands and transformed this place into the picture of serenity. So you flower buffs would obviously know what these are. 
actually Lulang is famous for its alpine meadows but because of the temperature and the altitude at this season many of the flowers haven't bloomed but if you calm down you'll be able to see loads of these azaleas just lining the roadsides beautiful aren't they don't worry if you want to see azaleas in full bloom up on the mountains just wait a couple more weeks and they'll be ready As for me, it's time I headed back to Bayi. We visited so many places, but we've barely left the town's vicinity. There's simply too much to see here, so make sure you join me for the next episode when we head to Western Linzhu.